Hey, guys, we have some leaks in Wild Rift. It's coming from this guy right here, Chow's channel. He's got a Twitter account where he posts a lot about leaks for Wild Rift. You can see pretty popular posts that he's put out here on some of the new upcoming champions that are being introduced into Wild Rift. He does it all through uh, Chinese server and beta files. He's put out a video here talking a little bit about these new champions coming to Wild Rift. And I think if any of you are savvy with League of Legends, you can pretty much get, you know, guess from the splash arts alone who they are. Before we get into the video, thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. There is a reference link in the description below. So, what new champions are coming? Well, uh, I've included this Skin Spotlights tweet right here uh, for a couple of reasons. Mainly because Skin Spotlights is a very good way at legitimizing leaks. They data mine a lot of stuff, and so they are very, very confident in, the, in kind of the leaks that they put out. And they've basically said, we're pretty sure that what Charles has put out is legit. And so that can tell you that it's pretty certain that we're going to get these three champions at some point in the near future. The other reason that I'm mentioning Skin Spotlights is they have very kindly allowed me to use some footage, which you'll see later on when we talk about the individual champions. So, first champion that's going to be coming out is going to be Caitlyn. As you can see here, I'll try and move her up a little bit. Caitlyn, uh, she's an AD carry. She's super long range. Um, she's got a really, really strong late game. A little bit, little bit of a rough mid game, which you sometimes see... Um, like with people like Tristana, but she's a pretty strong champion overall. Uh, and I, I really like Caitlyn as an AD carry player. She's actually a really simple AD carry to play. So I think if you're like not the most mechanically intense player in the world, you'll probably like Caitlyn quite a lot because she's not that mechanically insane to play. Um, and actually, I think a lot of like lower to mid elo players in League of Legends like Caitlyn because she is just that simple AD carry. And I think sometimes you do need those simple characters. A lot of people have drawn comparisons between her and a champion called Leslie from another game. You'll have to tell me who that is. I'm assuming it's Mobile Legends. The next one is Jace. Personally, one of my favorite champions as well. I used to main Jace in like season three and season four of League of Legends. And the really interesting thing about Jace is that he is a transforming champion. So Jace's ultimate allows him to transform between two weapons, a hammer and a cannon. Uh, his cannon is ranged, although not as long range as AD carries, and his hammer is obviously melee. What this tells me is that we could be getting more transforming champions in Wild Rift soon. So think like Elise and Nidalee and any of those champions that have a transformation in their kit. Jace is a transformer. Not that kind of transformer, but Jace transforms. And that's really cool because that now shows that Wild Rift has the ability to implement champions that have this kind of ability in the game. So, you know, things like Nidalee could be coming to Wild Rift soon. And the last one is Vygar. Vygar is like um, a really interesting champion. He's like a power fantasy champion. He's a champion that kind of like stacks uh, and gets more, gets stronger and stronger throughout the game. A little bit, he's like an AP version of Nasus. So if you like Nasus and you want to play like a mage, Vigar is basically mage Nasus. Um, his first ability, much like Nasus, is if you last hit minions or last hit champions, you gain permanent ability power. Um, so it's, it, it basically levels up all of his kit by going for last hits with this ability. So it's interesting to see how they'll balance it's interesting to see how they'll balance that with the time, you know, the time frame that you have in a Wild Rift game. So very interesting to see how Vyga works. So let's take a look at these individual champions using that footage from Skin Spotlights. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about them and where they fit into the meta. So I'm not going to go into the details of the abilities yet. Uh, we'll do that once they come towards their release. You guys can also probably go and look up their abilities on PC. And longtime League of Legends players will kind of know what these guys do already. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what they are, like they're designed to do, what they what the idea behind these champions are. Jace is a transforming champion who has both a melee and a ranged form. His melee form is all about getting into the middle of a team fight and dealing as much damage in as short of time as possible. So the melee the melee form is very burst damage heavy. The ranged form is more harass and long range heavy as you would expect. So Jace has this kind of uh, position in the meta where he's very, very good at poking from range due to the combination of some of his abilities in his ranged form, but also has the ability to go in and deal a lot of damage in melee form and finish people off very easily. He's generally considered a mid laner, 
and a baron laner. So you'll probably see Jace released and played in mid lane and baron lane predominantly. Uh, in very early League of Legends days, people would sometimes play Jace in the AD carry role. But as you can see here from his basic attack range, it is much shorter than a lot of the other AD carries in the meta. And therefore, Jace generally pairs up best in bot lane when you're playing him with an engaged support like Thresh or Blitzcrank because one of the things that Jace really benefits from, especially versus squishy targets, is that if they're pulled into melee range of him, he can obviously go straight into his hammer form and hit them on the head for a huge amount of damage. There are a couple of interactions between his abilities. You can see here um, in his ranged form, he does fire out a, a, a little blast, which gets sped up through this thing called Acceleration Gate. Acceleration Gate uh, otherwise provides a speed boost to all of the people that walk through it. Um, but yeah, as you can see, he is uh, generally kind of like filling this 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 role of a both ranged and melee champion in one. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't excel as much as a dedicated melee champion or a dedicated ranged champion, but it's the flexibility that Jace provides that really makes him a very strong pick. So I'm expecting to see a decent amount of Jace when he gets released. Caitlyn is, I'm showing you the Battle Academia Caitlyn skin because I'm expecting to see Battle Academia for both Jace and Caitlyn realistically uh, when those skins become relevant. Caitlyn is a sniper fantasy champion. She has a natural long range base attack. So she has got one of the longest base ranges in the game in terms of her base attack range. Therefore, she's considered a very dominant lane bully. Uh, and generally, all of her skills are around the process of dealing damage from extreme range whilst remaining safe. She also has a passive called Headshot, which, you know, it feeds into that fantasy of being a sniper. So a lot of her abilities are just about facilitating her strong, long-range base attacks, as well as dealing damage from range as well. Um, and you'll notice that a lot of her abilities synergize quite nicely with her basic attacks. Uh, and in general, you know, they're designed to make her, her feel like a super long range sniper AD carry. Her ultimate is a super long range single target burst, which you can see here. Uh, and again, fulfilling that role of a sniper, she is supposed to be more single target focused than anything else. Um, and so I expect to see Caitlyn picked up pretty frequently, actually, when she gets picked. I actually think Caitlyn will be really strong in Wild Rift. And the reason I think Caitlyn will be really strong in Wild Rift um, is mostly due to the fact that uh, crit scales very quickly in this game. So, I, you know, I think the things that hold Caitlyn back on PC is that it takes her a long time to get to the point where crits, uh, you know, uh, are, are frequent enough. And I think that in general, you'll see Caitlyn picked up a lot because the, the crits scale so quickly in this game. I think that she'll get to her late game much, much more readily and may maybe spike on less items than she needs to on PC. So, yeah, I think Caitlyn's going to be really, really strong. Expect to see her played quite a lot when she gets released in Wild Rift. Next one is Vigar. As I mentioned, this guy is like an AP Nasus. He scales up, he gets uh, extra AP for killing minions and champions. This ability that you're seeing spammed here is the one that you need to last hit minions with. Um, this is his astronaut skin. This is not his base skin, as you might have guessed from the uh, the splash art. But again, Vigar is a really old champion, and so his original champion spotlight is very, very old, and I'm on sort of like the old graphics. You can see here, this is a, a skin spotlight showing you just like that last hit farming with his first ability, and that gets you the AP gain for his passive. He is generally considered a burst mage. So Vigar is a kind of a longish range burst mage where he benefits a lot from setting up plays. You can see there's a lot of a delay on the, this is like one of his big burst abilities, a lot of delay there, but he's very good at like control and setup. Um, the ability that you're seeing spammed right now is called, the, we call it the baby cage. Essentially, you create a cage and if anyone walks through the walls, they get stunned for a pretty long amount of time. So I think this is going to be, I think Vigar is going to end up being absolutely nutty in Wild Rift because this is, this is going to be an ability that will just wreak havoc at the constant dragon fights and the constant, um, and the constant Rift Herald fights and stuff. So I actually think Vigar is not massively popular on PC because he generally takes too long to scale up. But I think because, again, Wild Rift is so, like, hectic and team fight focused, you might actually see Vigar played quite a lot because that, that cage ability is going to be absolutely nutty in team fight situations. His ultimate is very much like his first ability. It's a single target burst damage uh, focus. It deals more damage the more AP the enemy has. So it's more like an anti-AP. Uh, it's very good at taking out other mages. 
Um, but yeah, I expect to see that guy played a lot. He's going to be pretty fun for a lot of people who like the stacking style of play that Nasus provides, for instance. And I would say that he's arguably far more useful than Nasus in team fights as well. So yeah, I expect to see uh, that guy get played. Thank you very much, guys, to both Chows and Skin Spotlights for letting me uh, record this. Uh, go and follow these guys and uh, check out their videos too. I'll see you soon.